Logan Paul, has he got what it takes to defeat Dylan Danis on October the 14th? Six days away from the fight. I've got me tickets. I'm trying to get as much sleep as possible so I'm recovered and I'm able to have me first drink in 10 months. And I'm excited. Now today, because we're only a week out from the fight, I want to try and make some predictions about the fight, how it's going to go down. What shots does Logan Paul need to land in order to beat Dylan Danis? The difficult thing with this though is that Logan Paul hasn't really put out much sparring footage. Unless we're going off the Floyd Mayweather fight, which was how many years ago? two years ago. It's very difficult to know what improvements he's actually made. Now, Logan did help us out a little bit. He put a video up a few days ago on his Twitter. When was this? October the 4th. We are now on the 8th. And there's a few sparring footage clips in it. He's also got another video, which you can see here, this YouTube short, where he's critiquing Dylan Danis, but then he also includes a little sparring footage clip of himself at the end of that video. And although there's only a few seconds of footage, I think this footage actually shows us how the fight is going to go down and how he's going to finish Dylan Danis. Quick side note, you know one thing that's so annoying is the way my hair is going all wavy like this. Look at that, it's like a little ramp. Whee! I think it's where the headphones go. See what I mean? <laughs> creating a little ramp in my head. So what we'll do is we'll watch this footage right the way through. We'll critique the little clips of sparring footage that's in there. And we'll also take a look at the other clip because I think they're quite telling. So grab your protein shakes, sit back, and let's have a little watch. In the past three years, I went eight rounds with the best boxer on the planet. Soared off the top rope in front of 50,000 people. Started a successful business from scratch. And I've been training the entire time. And I promise, on October 14th, I'm gonna knock this bitch ass out. <laughs> Life is war, baby. Life is fucking war. I have been counted out for way too long. And I'm ready to show y'all just how great I am. Homie woke up a beast. Homie woke up a fucking beast. Nah, I'm so inspired. I'm so inspired right now. I am getting hyped. Okay, you might be thinking, Sean, there wasn't really much to take from that. But there was. There's a few little clips in here which shows us a lot about Logan Paul's progression. First off, you might have seen I rolled my eyes when Logan Paul said this. I went eight rounds with the best boxer on the planet. <sighs> Logan, come on, mate. Wasn't like Mayweather in his mid-40s when he had this fight. He, apparently he was barely even training for it. He looked very sloppy and Floyd still beat you. Logan Paul seems to have this narrative in his head that I went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the greatest boxer. Not really. He pretty much almost knocked you out and he was about 25, 27 kilos heavier than him, which is significant. But I understand it's Martin. So let's get to the first bit of sparring footage. Also this WWE stuff, yet you can't fake it. But I believe this is one of the main reasons why Logan Paul is on steroids because you can't do this much volume and recover from it effectively. He is 100% on gear. We'll do a Logan Paul Natty or not video, so make sure you subscribe for that. Started a successful business from and I've been training the entire time. <laughs> Headphone one. So here we have the first bit of sparring footage. There's not a lot of it, but I think what we're looking at here is potentially the fight ending shot. So let's play it frame by frame. So here they're in the clinch. Logan Paul's on the left. This is really good. He's actually got his eyes on the prize. Not like Ryan Taylor the other day when he came out of the clinch and he wasn't even looking at Slim. This is a good sign. It means he's got his proprioception there. He's got his eyes on the target. It's good. He comes out of the clinch... Okay, hits a hook. Let's just actually take a look at that a little bit closer. Now, something I've noticed with Logan Paul's right hook, it's not quite as good as his left hook. It's a little bit of what you'd call an arm punch. He doesn't quite use the torque of his body and the rotational aspect as much when he's using his right hook as he does when he's using his left hook. If we slow it down a little bit, you'll see what I mean. Watch frame by frame. Eyes on the target. That's all good. He throws everything into it. And then his shoulders and his hips stop rotating around here. So watch there now he should twist into that a little bit more but watch he finishes the shot with his arm and his torso almost stays static watch his torso in relation to his arm there you see it's kind of like boom let me do a demo i know you guys like the demos Yo, speaking of logan got some pokemon cards what you know about shinies lads what you know about shinies yeah <laughs> logan paul fancy meeting up at the misfits event send us a few million and i'll give you them anyway what he kind of does he doesn't fully twist into his shots, especially coming from that right side. He kind of throws the hook, and rather than turning into it with the shot, he kind of slaps it, and his torso stops rotating there. So it's a little bit more of a slap, and there's no rotational aspect in his hips. Remember the Sneeko? 
<laughs> it's still good. He's still got a lot of power there. I'm not denying that. He's got good power. But we can kind of see it's almost a slap than it is a punch. You should be punching with the knuckles, especially on a hook. He kind of punches with the inside of his hand. He punches with this instead of this we did see him do that a little bit in the mayweather fight now of course he's a big athletic dude he's got a lot of muscle he's on the gear so he can still probably get away with that but if he was able to turn into his shots a bit more and turn his knuckles in and actually connect with those front two knuckles he'd have even more knockout power but that's kind of what happens when you're a big guy with a lot of muscle you can throw these shots with less technique and it can still land and hurt your opponent. So let's play it through. Okay, so he's doing some slipping here. Like, what's he trying to do here? Is he trying to do a Philly shell? So he's... Guard down. If this was MMA, that would be perfect just for a knee right up the middle. Uh, this is a tough one because you guys know me. I'm an advocate for fighting with my hands down. I do it from time to time myself. But within kickboxing and MMA, not boxing itself, there's only a few people out there within the boxing world who can fight with their hands down. Logan tends to fight with his hands down a lot more. This isn't even like Philly Shell. This is like a hybrid of Philly Shell and hands completely by your side now if logan slips like this in the fight there's a potential for dylan to either catch him with an uppercut on the way down or even the right hook as he's coming back up to that star position right this is only half a second clip but i believe what we're looking at in this clip is the potential fight ending shot right here let's slow it right down so logan throws a one a two Obviously, he's not getting full extension on the cross, but that's not the intention. The cross is not meant to land with any sort of impact. It's all to set up this body hook. And what I'd like you to pay extra attention to is look at the twist and the torque that he gets into this left body shot. Boom. That's good. That's a good shot. Logan Paul's got an ass like a smackhead. <laughs> My American subscribers out there who don't know what a smackhead is, post in the comments and let one of the UK boys fill you in. <laughs> so the technique that Logan displays on this left body hook is so much better than the technique he displays on his right hook. He actually gets the twist and the rotational aspect correct. Pay extra close attention to his hips. A little bit more forward facing now. Watch as he digs that hook right in. Boom. He turns the hips right over. So this is a potential fight ending shot for Logan. Dylan has got a big head, which means he might have a really good chin. We haven't seen it being tested a lot. And if that's the case, when you're going up against someone with a really good chin, you have to start going to the body. I think this could be the shot right here. We've got a little bit of heavy bag footage here. Once again, like half a second of footage. So he's just doing some pitter-patter jabs. But anyone who doesn't know much about fighting, don't take this as bad or anything. He's just doing some pitter-patter jabs to set up a uh, left hook. Left hook, pretty decent. Mm, kind of looked like he threw himself out of position there a bit. There. It's just on the end of the punch. Once again, it doesn't seem like he's getting that rotational aspect in there. He's throwing with good torque, and then right as he's about to hit the bag, his body stops rotating, and he kind of finishes the punch with his arm. And that might be why he's kind of getting off balance and out of position after them hooks. Now, Logan's jab is one of his best weapons because he's got such long arms. So I think we're going to see a lot of that. We're going to see a lot of jabs, and I think he can use that jab to set up the left body hook and then potentially go high with the left hook after that. I can't see Logan knocking out Dylan Danis with the right hook because it's a little bit more of an arm punch. But it just seems on those left hooks, he's got a little bit more twist and a bit more pop in them. Then here against the Spartan partner, he throws a pretty decent jab, so... Right there, that's a good jab. Twists the lad's head around, then follows it up with a nice straight hand. Almost misses the lad, but clips him right behind the ear. If he lands that on Dylan behind the ear as Dylan's ducking down, that can knock off your equilibrium and actually knock you out. Think of the first fight between Conor McGregor and Dustin Poirier. Conor clipped Poirier with a hook, and it wasn't really that hard, but it was behind the ear, and it knocked Poirier down. This could also potentially be a fight-ending shot right here. Hmm... That one I'm a bit confused. Let me just watch that again. This part's a little bit confusing because I can't see what his feet are doing. But it looks to me like his right leg goes back whilst he throws the straight right. Almost like a Superman punch, but it's not a Superman punch. So, there. Right, so it looks like his feet were closer together. And then his body weight goes backwards as he throws the right hand. And it still connects pretty cleanly. If Logan was in that stance right there and he was a few more inches closer to the lad, so a little bit more in range, and then was to throw that right hand, that would have so much more power as opposed to throwing it whilst moving back at the same time. And you can see that's still got a lot of pop in it. That's pretty much it for the video that he posted the other day. As I said, that left body hook looks pretty decent. It just seems like the hooks to the head that he's doing lack a little bit more torque and rotation, a little bit more on. 
arm punchy. Then we got this video. I'm not going to bore you with the first little bit. It's just Logan critiquing Dylan Danis's sparring footage. But we get to the end and we see a little bit more footage of Logan Paul throwing some shots. So let's play it through first. <laughs> It's a gunshot, kid. Not surprising. Dylan doesn't take boxing serious. He got Velcro gloves. He don't even lace up. He got sketchers on his hands. Once again, as we can see by this video, it's the body hook that drops the opponent. But let's slow it down because once again, there's a few technique issues here. First off, the way he's loading up on this uppercut is a little bit weird. It looks like he's got a shovel and he's digging a grave. <laughs> Right, another demo. So an uppercut shouldn't come from right back here, which is where he is. And he's throwing it there. See what I mean? Look at his elbow. Now let's just frame by frame play this. Okay, now look at his back foot. As he throws that punch, his back foot completely leaves the floor. Watch the back foot. So the back foot off the floor and almost crosses behind his front foot. He's doing a John Zerker there. But he's a big guy. He's still got a lot of power in it. If he was able to keep both feet planted there, he'd get a lot more power in that shot. So boom, he almost punches himself with that uppercut. And he throws the one, two, and then goes back to that body hook. Did he have his foot off the floor for that hook as well? Watch his back foot again when he throws this hook. One, two, back foot, back foot. Yeah. So Logan is a very powerful lad, but he's leaking a lot of power in his shots when he's throwing these uppercuts and hooks because that back foot has a tendency to come off the floor. And we are nitpicking here. Logan's a decent boxer and he can certainly throw a punch as well, but this is all we've got to work with unless we go back and see the Mayweather fight, which isn't really going to be an accurate representation of how he's fighting now. That's why it's always good to see sparring footage like this and see, okay, what developments has he made? And I certainly think he's going to have a lot more power than he did against Floyd because he's most likely being on the source, the juice, the cocoa pop aka steroids but my conclusion not my full final prediction but if logan paul's going to win this fight it's most likely going to be by the left body hook or the left hook upstairs i don't really see it being a straight right i don't see it being an uppercut i actually think that left hook is logan paul's strongest weapon going to be interesting to see how this plays out what do you guys think of this spot on footage now that you've seen it with me have you taken anything new from it what part of logan paul's game do you think dylan danis might be able to exploit logan paul on based on this footage next saturday is the day i'm looking forward to it as everyone knows i'm gonna vlog the event i was actually gonna get me proper videographer to come down but he's busy on that day and i don't really trust anyone else so i'm just gonna be vlogging it myself with me mate so make sure you like this video and dm me on instagram any video ideas you've got until we get this discord set up appreciate all the support and all the positive comments i'll see you all tomorrow